Other useful information that can be gleaned from mass spectrum is due to what we call the M plus 1 peak. So if you find your parent peak here, and ours again in this compound, showing up right here. So, and that looks like it's at a mass of 72. So everything relative to 72 then is what we define like our M minus 29. And so in this case, M plus 1 would be the peak that's showing up at 73. So, and if you know the relative intensities of those two, we can find out some useful information. So, it turns out that carbon-12 has a natural abundance of 98.9%, carbon-13, 1.1%, and carbon-14, uh, a very, very super tiny fraction uh, of a percent. And we don't even worry about carbon-14. Uh, and in this case, though, uh, there's a slight chance that one of your molecules will get a carbon-13 in it, and instead of weighing 72, it would therefore weigh 73. So, and that's why we've got this M plus 1 peak at 73. Now, the likelihood of getting one of those carbons is not very high. So, per carbon, it's 1.1%. So, if you have two carbons, it'd be 2.2%. Three carbons, 3.3%. Four carbons, 4.4%. So on and so forth. And so there's a quick formula. If you know the relative intensities, like we've given here, 18% for the molecular ion, 1% for the M plus 1 peak. If you know those relative intensities, you can actually determine pretty quickly how many carbons are in your compound. If you take the intensity of the M plus 1 peak, so in this case, 1%, divided by the intensity of the molecular ion peak, 18%. So multiply by 100, and then divide this total by 1.1. One, again, the percentage uh, natural abundance of carbon, you actually get the number of carbons. And in this case, we're going to find out that we actually have five carbon atoms in our structure. So in this case, weighing 72, we could figure out that this was C5H12 for our empirical formula, or molecular formula in this case. Uh, so nice little convenient trick using the M plus 1 peak uh, to determine the number of carbons. But again, you've got to be given these relative intensities in your note not always going to get those. And uh, this is something that's not taught in every course or in every, uh, by every professor, but uh, shows up in most textbooks and something there's a good chance you're responsible for. When interpreting a mass spectrum, uh, pretty much after you've identified the molecular ion, oftentimes the next thing you'll look for is the presence of what we call an M plus 2 peak, something too heavier than your molecular weight. So, and the odds are is that you don't really have an M plus 2 peak in most spectrum, so when you do, it should totally stick out. So if you recall, we just talked about the fact that carbon-12 has a 98.9% .9 abundance, carbon-13 a 1.1% abundance. So the odds of getting any particular carbon in your molecule uh, to being a carbon-13 and getting an M plus 1 peak is 1.1%. The odds of getting two carbon 13s in your molecule, therefore, is pretty much nil. And that's why you don't usually have any significant M plus 2 peak. However, if you've got bromine or chlorine, that's actually going to be very different. So bromine is very different uh, from most of the other elements in that instead of having one major isope, it actually has two. If you look at your average atomic mass on the periodic table for bromine, it's 79.9, somewhere close to 80. So, but you don't really have bromine 80. You've got bromine 79, it turns out here, and bromine 81, and close to a 50-50 ratio of both. Notice a slight excess of bromine 79 there at 51%. Uh, and in this case, that actually leads to two populations of molecules, those that have a bromine 79 and those that have a bromine 81. And we consider the ones for the bromine 79 to be your molecular ion here, whereas those that have the bromine 81 we consider to be the, responsible for the M plus 2 peak. So, and this is a dead giveaway. So if you look at this compound in particular, go to the far right, and you actually have two tall peaks, and it turns out the one on the left is taller. So, and maybe you can't tell, because truth be told, I can't tell. Uh, but when you got bromine, the one on the left is taller due to that slight, slightly higher abundance at 51% for bromine 79. And so in this case, if we look at that, that looks like it's got a molecular weight of 136. But not at 137, but at 138, we've got a peak that's roughly equal in height. That's your dead giveaway that you've got a bromine. This molecular ion peak and your M plus 2 peak are present in roughly 1 to 1 ratio. You've definitely got a bromine. So again, normally you're not going to see an M plus 2 peak, but if you see one and it's in a 1 to 1 ratio, dead giveaway you've got a bromine. Another element with two major isotopes is chlorine here. And in this case, it's chlorine 35 as the major, chlorine 37 as the minor. But in this case, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. We see 76% uh, natural abundance for chlorine 35 and a 24% abundance for chlorine 37, roughly about a three-to-one ratio. So, but when you've got a chlorine in your molecule, you will again have two populations of molecules, those with a chlorine 35 and those with a chlorine 37. And the one with the chlorine 35 being the higher abundance by a significant amount, 
will give way to your parent peak. And so in this case, we're going to see a peak here at 126, and that is your molecular ion. So, but then we also see a peak here at 128. That's the M plus 2 peak. But notice these are not in a 1 to 1 ratio. Now they're in a 3 to one ratio, and that's the dead giveaway here, roughly 75 to 25% ratio here. That three to one ratio dead giveaway, you've got a chlorine in your molecule rather than a bromine. So in this case, again, find your molecular ion, get your molecular weight, if it's an odd number, you got nitrogen. So, and then look at your M plus two peak to see if you've got a bromine or a chlorine. Again, normally you shouldn't have any significant M plus two peak. If you do, one to one ratio bromine, three to one ratio chlorine. So I just wanna do a quick overview of what we've discussed above here. So when you're interpreting a mass spectrum, there is some information you can get in less than 10 seconds. So find your parent peak and get your molecular weight. And if it's an odd number, you know you've got an odd number of nitrogens. So then look for an M plus two peak. If you don't have an M plus two peak, you got no bromine or chlorine. But if you do have an M plus two peak, if it's in a one to one ratio, you got bromine. If it's in a three to one ratio, you've got chlorine. And all of that can be determined within 10 seconds. For sure, there's more information to be gotten from your mass spectrum, but this is what you can get in 10 seconds. Oftentimes we'll give you the mass spectrum and combine it with the infrared or the NMR or both. So usually I would just spend 10 seconds on this and if I still can't get it after looking at the other spectra, I'd come back and get some more information out of it. So, but it's fine to say, this is kind of your efficient 10 second interpretation of your mass spectrum.